it'll get your life back to normal. Lonnie with Restore It, Restore It, Restore It Restoration. Welcome to another edition of the Service Guys Podcast. How is everybody doing? I'm your co-host, Ruel. And on the other line, we have our service professional, Lonnie Beecham. What's up, Lonnie? How you doing? <clears throat> I'm I didn't good. know if we were going to record again after we had a, you know, the famous, infamous Jackie, Jackie Jones. Jones on the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what happened. I think we just got really busy. Yeah, I've time. been swamped with all kinds of personal and business and family stuff. So, it happens. Well, I hope uh, not too bad. No, I mean, it's all been good stuff. You know, just busy. I mean, a lot's actually happened in the last little bit. I've uh, officially moved out of the other warehouse space that I was in, and now, now I'm in another one. I'm almost put away. So that's, oh, yeah. that's new and exciting. Rent went up, but it, it's for the better. Okay. Overall, for yeah. the better. Yeah, a move. Yeah, that's that's a lot of busy going on when talking about moving. Yeah, fortunately, most of my stuff is is big stuff, so I can grab a lot quick and throw it in the back of the box truck. And in between other work, you know, dealings, I can go and unload it and drop it in the new place. And I was gonna have to move anyway. Um, because I couldn't get my box truck in inside a building where I was. I, I've moved twice, three times in the last six months, or since April. So I was in one place, had to go somewhere real fast. So I got, you know, moved into another area on the same complex. And then, um, and then they were wanting to move me again. And I couldn't, after the first move, I couldn't get my box truck inside. So I was going to have to do something anyway. I got a piece of machinery in the back of the box truck that I can't allow to freeze. So, there's that. So everything settled? The new place? Yeah, I mean, I, I got the small stuff sitting in boxes, and since I have to move people pretty often from one location to another, or at least pull some of their belongings out, I have to... Um, yeah, you know, I have boxes on hand to the small stuff, the papers and stuff, and the small hand tools just went in boxes. And I got, I'm down to one box that needs to be put away. So, and I think I got a home for everything now. So, so that's nice. Cool. Well, I haven't been checking anywhere. with you. Well, so the last time we talked, what's uh, we we blew past. Uh, kids' birthday parties at home and at Chuck E. Cheese and Halloween and all that good stuff. So, oh, a lot yeah. happened. Oh, you're young enough that you got to do the Halloween stuff. Yeah, well, we, we hosted a party on one of the weekends. We hosted a party on a Saturday at home. Um, you know, good friends, relatives, things like that, you know, had the jump house, had the whole Halloween theme for the, for the birthdays because two of the kids are our October babies. And then uh, on Sunday, we hosted a Chuck E. Cheese event for like my daughter's, more for my daughter's uh, old classmates and current classmates. So that was fun. The, uh, nice. the, the, in, the interesting, that particular weekend, our refrigerator started to die. Actually, it probably... Uh, <clears throat> The Thursday before the weekend, the refrigerator started to die because things in the freezer were getting soft, you know, things like oh, frozen no. fruit and stuff. Yeah. And uh, so we had the party on Saturday. We got through that. Saturday, su- Sunday morning, walked into the kitchen and there was just pools of water right at the base of the refrigerator. And, you know, <laughs> was like, that's a sign that it died. Yeah. So... Fortunately, we have the uh, we have a second refrigerator freezer in the garage. We we inherited it. We were gifted it because my brother-in-law and his family, when they moved into the area, they 
had this refrigerator that they didn't need to didn't need to put in their uh, their new rental. So they stayed with us, and they said you can have it. I'm like, cool. We make good use of it. So everything went there, and uh, we transferred all the stuff out. Went over to a uh, to a Lowe's to see what they to see what they had as far as uh, refrigerators and stuff, and then then figured out that oh we didn't take any measurements. <laughs> We don't know if oh, the yeah. space is deep enough for the refrigerator that we do want. So we, we went back home, did the measurements, then went back to Lowe's and then made our choice. Unfortunately, uh, that was Sunday and they were able to deliver our new unit on a Monday afternoon. Oh, nice. Yeah. You didn't try to repair the old one? You just scrapped it? And... Yeah, it's it was 19 years old and... It, uh, I, it, I, I think we maxed out the average life uh, expectancy of a refrigerator. I think it's like 14, 15 years on the average. Like yeah, yeah. And I, I was hoping that I could like clean out that whole sort of grill system of coolant and whatnot off of like debris and dust and stuff and then maybe resurrect it, but it didn't. Uh, so, so for a day, the... Uh, the old refrigerator was used just as a cabinet storage. <laughs> oh, sure. Might as well. Did I ever tell you about the time I was cleaning the uh, fins and, you know, the mechanisms underneath our fridge? Did I ever tell you that story? No. Tell me. So, <clears throat> my wife left uh, for several hours, left me uh, by myself unattended without adult supervision. So, uh, yeah, I decided to go down to my shop, grab some plastics and, you know, zip walls and, and uh, grab a leaf blower and, uh, and and an air scrubber. So, of course, I could have done this in 10 minutes, but it took, you know, a trip to my shop, plastic, set up containment. And she walks in catching me putting a leaf blower underneath the fridge, blowing up this big old mess of dust. And she's like, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, I'm cleaning the fridge. I'm cleaning the, <laughs> the coils. And uh, she's like, well, leave it to you to just overdo that. You're so dramatic. And, and of course, she sees all the dust. But I'm like, hey, I'm being prudent. I, I put up the curtain to, con- to confine the mess to just this one little area. And she's like, well, you better clean it up. And, I, and it needs to be spotless because it was spotless before you got this hairbrained idea. So but sure enough, I mean, I, I did my job. <laughs> vacuumed it up. Left there, so never run it. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like somebody was itchy for work on that particular period. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it would have been a lot easier to just go get a you know twelve dollar bottle of coil cleaner, spray it on, and and um, or vacuum it out first, and then put the coil cleaner on it. And and uh, but of course that's not how I roll. <laughs> You're hardcore, Lonnie. That's funny. Yeah, that's just uh, the testosterone in me. You know, bigger is always better. Yeah, my my wife was excited to go shopping for uh, for the new refrigerator that that morning, and uh, you know they've got these uh, these Samsung refrigerators that have a big old LCD on it. It's basically a gigantic tablet uh, that that has that has the capability of hooking up to your network and all that fancy stuff. And my son right. was like, I, I want this one. I want this one. And I swear to God, it was like easily two thousand dollars more than we want to spend on any sort of refrigerator. And he starts giving me that look, like, "Oh, he really wants it," you know. I'm like, I'll "Tell you what, kids, because I can see it now. If we have this thing at home, they're never leaving the front of the refrigerator. They're all playing with it and stuff." So I told him, "So what? So I'll tell you what, guys. We'll have to get rid of all of your tablets." And your you know, Nintendo this and that, your Switches and your, your Wii U's. And uh, they're like, what? Why? Why? Well, if you want to get this refrigerator with this LCD, we're going to have to get rid of all your devices because you won't need it because you guys will be too busy playing on this refrigerator. And they're like, yeah, yeah forget it. I don't there. want. <laughs> they're sitting there yeah. crisscross applesauce in front of the fridge watching YouTube videos. <laughs> that that would be hilarious. That, that's, that's not far from the truth. I'm sure that's... I mean... It's basically a big fat 
iPad on top of a refrigerator. But yeah, they they quickly they quickly dismissed that refrigerator. They didn't they didn't care for it. <laughs> yeah, that they're they're crazy expensive, aren't they? Yeah. Hey, so the guys came and delivered the new fridge, and yep. uh, they were pretty good at it. They were pretty quick, and they made me worry a bit because once you remove the old model from the, the the old refrigerator from its space, uh, taking the tape measure, a measuring tape, and then letting me know how much the new refrigerator is going to extend past the uh, the the, uh, the counter, it right. looks it looks crazy. Like, oh my God, did we buy something that was way too big for this? You know. It's gonna black ha- it's gonna block half the 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 walk area in, in the kitchen. Um, then I realized, well, I made my own measurements. I'm confident with my measurements. The fact that there's a big old empty empty space now makes it look scary. And sure enough, when the guys uh, and they quickly did quickly installed it, it looked perfect. And uh, nice. And I and 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 we kept our service guys. We kept our service guys. Never had to. Never thought about tipping the service guys before, but. You know, it ain't easy. It ain't easy to lug big old appliances and stuff. And yeah, that's what we did. Good. I'm glad you <laughs> tipped your your service guy. We tipped him and gave him uh, several bottles of cold water and uh, and a couple of cans of cold ginger ale because right now my wife has a ginger ale fix. Ah, <laughs> uh, she pregnant? No, <laughs> no. No, I'm pregnant. I'm, I think I'm like two months uh, right now. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Food baby, probably. It's a food. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's an alcohol baby and a food baby. Yeah, and I guess Monday night. I guess uh, we bought a car. My my we oldest daughter. Well, uh, we bought a, a a Ford Escape. SUV nice. thing. So here's yeah. what I've learned. My 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 daughters are both just shy of five foot one, and my oldest will be 16 December 21st. And uh, we had to try so many different makes and models and years and stuff for her to get a car that she could actually see out of and not be kissing the steering wheel. Because like she drives my wife's car mostly. And uh, she's all the way forward, and she can barely tiptoe the gas pedal and brakes and stuff. And you don't realize what a short person goes through uh, until you're trying to buy a car. It's like, man, I, it's more car than I wanted to buy for a 16-year-old. But, um, yeah, so we now got another vehicle coming into our home. We'll probably bring it home tomorrow. So nice. There's that. Now, now we're looking at pricing of insurance, adding a 16 year old driver onto our our insurance, and uh, yeah, I'm looking at 150 dollars a month for for a car insurance for a 16 year old. Oh, crazy. Yeah. When did she start work? <laughs> but, right. That's like this little girl needs a job. And then she's like, well, dad, school is my job. I'm like, yeah, that, that went out the window when you, you got a, just $150 a month in car insurance. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's not maintenance. That's not gas. That's, you know. Yeah. So I'm on my way out to this small job that I'm doing at a bank here. Okay. And um, so last week, I had to redo everything because I failed it, failed the post test the first time because I made a very, very rookie mistake. I had never seen in 18 years, I've never seen any construction like this. So, so they pour the, the footing and then they, then they always pour the foundation wall. And then whenever they put the slab in, it's supposed to sit right on the footer and go up to the concrete foundation wall, right? Yeah, well, this, I can imagine this, that. This particular place is supposed to seal it all up and, you know, become one uniform piece and, and that sort of thing, right? So this construction, they actually took uh, uh, 
oh, a fiber board and uh, outlined the perimeter of this whole entire basement of the bank. It's like 70 feet long by 27 or 30 feet wide. And yeah, they, they, they wrapped all, every bit of that concrete in this stuff. And I didn't catch it. And then on the air test, everything came back. Uh, like, like the guy called me, Lonnie, I haven't seen you screw the pooch this bad in, in 15. I'm like, what are you talking about? Because man, you introduced several new mold species and, and, uh, the, all the mold counts are through the roof and, and, uh, yeah, lo and behold, I went in a couple of Fridays ago and I'm just like, huh, what, what did I miss? And I get to poking around and looking and that's what it was all the way around. So I had to, you know, chisel that out and, uh, luckily it was wet and rotted. So it came out pretty easy. Oh, and, uh, so why, is that standard to, to, to put fiberboard along the, the, the no. edges of the, so no. then you had to go out ship it out and then did you have to seal it on your own to sort of prevent any of that yep um, i had to go get a moisture concrete concrete um what do they call it flow caulk or something it's like a self-leveling and uh we had a couple saturdays ago we we pulled it all out i guess two saturdays ago we pulled out the perimeter everywhere and 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 the stuff that wasn't rotted and wet we just beat it in submission basically and uh left it intact but left enough room to put this flow agent this this concrete sealer goop all the way around the perimeter of it it only took uh 10 tubes of this caulking agent stuff that uh cost like 25 dollars a tube <laughs> so that was rather expensive but it's a change order, so, you know, I was able to, uh, you know, I got to make some changes to the final estimate. So normally on mold mold damage, I, I get <clears throat> 75% up front. And, um, again, then with any damage and passing of the, of the test, then I collect my my 25% retainer. And uh, well, this with this being commercial... I only did a a fifty percent draw up front, knowing that there's going to be some stuff coming, you know, going, you know, plus and minus is happening. Like I had it, I had it accounted to to do a certain uh, procedure upstairs that didn't end up needing that that that's getting subtracted off, and then um, but now I got to add this the labor and the material for this concrete ceiling that I did. Kind of fun. Yeah. Sounds, sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So now I'm in the basement over here. Wrapping up. Same cord. place. Same yeah. site, different site. Okay. No, same okay. site. I, uh, I got word today. I haven't seen the official lab results. I just got word that it was, that it, that it was, great so that's all i need at this point i'll get a i'll get the nice little official email letter thing here sh shortly sometime today but i don't even really care what it says it just says it says, says you've unscrewed the pooch yep yep so yeah if you hear any background noise that's that's what i'm doing i gotta peel tape and like that you hear that noise yeah is that your gorilla yeah. tape no it's my preservation tape you gotta <laughs> price that stuff it is expensive and it's kind of hard to describe it has really high tack which means it it sticks it sticks to stuff really well but it has a great release let you know doesn't leave uh does doesn't rip it's like mm, how do i grab this it's kind of like frog tape on preservation tape yeah and you and you use it for things like taping off containment to drywall now i can't get this son of a bitch to close 
Uh, you know, so I can, if I need to put plastic on up against some finished painted drywall, ouch, I can do that. And it's not supposed to rip the drywall off the, off the wall, but sometimes it does. So kind of like painters, the blue painter tape, but a, with a bit more tack. Right. Oh, crap. Huh. Isn't that funny? You get to hear how the sausage is made. I can't figure out how to close this, this window. <laughs> Isn't that great? We're going to have to get a, a window is. guy on, on the podcast to describe uh, what to do. No, I got it. It finally, it finally closed. I just had to force it a little harder. So yeah, I'm in the basement over here. This is a good day. That means I get paid next week. It, it actually can, sounds kind of spooky right now, just where you're at. And <laughs> oh, the hollow, the the echoey. Yeah, yeah, you guys. Lonnie's in a haunted uh, facility. Has that ever happened to you? I know we're, we're past Halloween, where you've been in a place that, where there are stories that it may or or is haunted kind of situation. Not that I know of. No, I've never, I've never ran across any kind of paranormal activity. You know, everything's either dead or wet or, you know. When you're hiring someone to clean your carpets, you're probably assuming that they're using better equipment and better cleaning solutions than you would. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Their equipment should heat the water to 200 degrees to ensure that your carpets are not only clean, but disinfected. Next time you hire someone to clean your carpet or tile, ask them how hot their water gets. If they don't know or it's less than 200 degrees, send them back and call me, Lonnie Beecham, with Restore It Restoration. I'll get your carpets done right and your life back to normal. And this has been a crazy day. I mean, my phone has been ringing off the hook. So I've been to a hotel that um, is owned, you know, by, uh, you know, oh, there's one family that owns like, I don't know, six or seven hotels in Jeff City. And on the 10th floor, they had a toilet overflow and it flooded into the lower, lower area down uh-oh, below. And- uh-oh. Yeah, and they wanted it done right, but they didn't want to pay to have it done right because this source of water is considered sewage water, and it's in the ceiling, and, it, and they uh, they just wanted me to they just wanted me to uh, to uh, spray it down, and that's it. They didn't want any, anything to be dried. They didn't want anything more. I was like, well, sign here. No, and then I told you that it's just ripped out. You hear that noise? Yeah, was, that sounds like paranormal activity to me. <laughs> yeah, that's called me taking down my containment. I had a big, so this bank ceiling that's, I don't know, let's say 12 feet. I had to build, I had to put some plastic up that um, kept all, you know, separate the areas and, you know. No big deal. It's like it's like tearing down a shower curtain, right? Kinda, basically, yeah. Where you, where you rip it off and then tape. on the other end, it's it's taped off and stapled off and stuff like that. And and when you rip it out, it reveals a, a serial killer on the other side with a with a knife, <laughs> <laughs> staring at you. <laughs> that is kind of cool to have. He's in access to a bank 24-7. Kind of, As kind of you, uh, you, you try and figure out the layout and how to access the safe from the, from, from, uh, <laughs> from the back end. The well, that, part I don't, <laughs> that part I don't have access to after hours. Yeah. Kind of neat. It's like I'm taking Ruel to work with me today. Yeah, thank you. I'm enjoying this field trip. It's a ride along. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else are we talking about? So, you know that uh, the whole state was burning up recently, right? Yeah. How how that affect you? 
Hmm. Well, on one of the weekends, we went over to Santa Rosa and my to meet up with my sister-in-law. And, uh, you know, my wife and her sister and another friend did a, uh, did a class, a workout class. And uh, while we were there, there was uh, already word that the, the two towns north were going through uh, mandatory evacuations. Oh, no kidding. That's something yeah, I don't so, deal with. And, uh, I deal with, after we were, with tornadoes, but I don't deal with wildfires. Then after the class, we drove uh, sort of northeast away from where a lot of the, the fire fires were to uh, visit a right. property because my wife and I, you know, were looking at a, a venue to uh, hold a special event. And uh, mm-hmm. so we left, we left that place and, uh, you know, only to find out the next day that a lot of the, the roads and area that we had crossed <laughs> that day uh, yeah. was hit was was hit. So I was like, wow. So we we saw the last healthy state of that stretch of that stretch of uh these cities and stuff or these you know, before it all got burned down. So that is bummer. crazy to me. You know, and, and it's not just the fires, there there's also um scheduled power shutdowns and stuff, so even if you're not affected by the fire, you're just having to deal without any electricity for di- for days. Oh wow! But it, what's Man, even crazier that's is wild. it. You know, like days like today, you sort of well, because we're not directly, you know, hurt by it. We we it's just life is normal. It's it's crazy, but if we really think about it, there's a lot of people who have no place to go, and and it sucks. Where so where do they go? Homeless um, shelters. Like there was Churches. a there was a there was a family of five who are friends with my sister in law who had to evacuate and they had nowhere to go so they they just called up my sister in law middle of the the night and said we're heading over you know like early really early morning so they they truly have no place to go some places this uh, the fairgrounds are opened up for basically makeshift you know, campgrounds or whatever. Oh, um, wow. Where, wherever there's space. Yeah. In in our area, where when the power was scheduled to go out, you know, there were facilities. So they tell you, like, Tuesday at 3 or whatever? Yeah, they, they give you a whole map of all the impact areas. And then uh, in, there are spots in town that aren't impacted, and folks can go if they need to, like get water or get a, get some minimal supplies and charge devices and things of that nature. Wow. That's crazy. That's scary. That's sad. Oh, wow. Yeah. That one's heavy. Yeah. So did you ever lose power? We didn't. We didn't. We were always on the, uh, the edge of where the, you know the line of cut of uh the impacted areas were okay and yeah. your office and everything was okay uh, we office. lost power the, we, we lost power at the office one day and i that was the day where i wasn't in but speaking of the office there was one day where it was this, i wasn't there but it was described as they heard this this loud bang and from the fourth floor if you look out the window you could see water shooting up right somebody had somebody had hit a uh a, a, a fire hydrant, hydrant. And, yeah and and you love that kind of stuff right oh that's always fun <laughs> i gotta show you the video someone posted it on twitter it was crazy it was like one of the river, best times r- i i ever had in des moines i was with my uh in-laws and uh we're down there downtown having lunch and it's just started pouring rain and all of a sudden uh well, my brother-in-law was telling me, oh, we're we're prone to flash flooding down here. So we might, you know, might have to bail. I'm like, okay. Next thing you know, I literally, within five minutes, I start seeing a river of water coming down the street. And I, and I got to watch it go into the people's businesses right across the street. It was so cool. Oh, no. <laughs> it 
<laughs> it was so cool to watch. I'm just like, and I was videotaping. I wish I still had that, but it's like, yeah. And, and I just watched them do what people always do. They go grab the four towels or so that they have at their office. And like, that's going to do anything when a river is, you know, a foot and a half higher than your <laughs> threshold. It's just, it's just leaking in. And, and then a, and within two seconds of the towels were, were wet and they're just standing there not knowing what to do. <laughs> oh my God. That's like, crazy. Glad I'm not working. Glad I'm not working today. <laughs> All right. Where are you at? Starbucks? No, I'm out and about. There's a. It's called a Yerba Buena Gardens. So it's a big old, I guess, lawn. People are just laying down and getting some sun. And there's a fountain on one side, and there's a building with a theater and a food court where people are just, you know, hanging out. Are you? Is it still warm there? Because we're like getting down in the 20s already and highs of 40s and stuff like that um it depends it's like 43 low 76 high here in the city so the, the you know like in the shade it's kind of cool about out under the sun it, it it feels great um yeah it it's it's getting chilly there's in the morning there's some there's some like frost on the grass and stuff getting there Frost? You don't have frost. Uh, <laughs> yes, we do. California frost. Mmm, <laughs> special frost. So, Ruel, what causes yeah. frost? It's uh, it's uh, cold, really cold, <laughs> and, and, uh, and silly, and and air, cold and air. It's actually the the dew point. The dew point. What's the dew point? Well, remember that surface, like the ground reaches dew point. That's what causes dew to form on the grass. And if it's cold enough, it'll freeze. So I'm right. It's air and cold. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's something I I have to watch is the dew point on a on a water job. If I get too much evaporation and not enough dehumidification, I can literally cause it to rain in a house. And oh. uh, we got to watch the dew point all the time. Mainly the first day after that, after that we're fine usually. So yeah. After the, after the deposit clears there, you're, you're fine. <laughs> you don't pay attention <laughs> to the dew point. Not, it's not quite like that. But uh, time. No, the first day when we, whenever it's wet and we're extracting water out and stuff, um, if, if we don't, if we have too many, too many air movers going and we're getting too much evaporation, all that humidity goes up in the air, and then um, you know it'll collect on your mirrors and metal fixtures and refrigerators yeah. and pipes yeah. and stuff like that. So it doesn't actually yeah. rain. But that's essentially what it is. Yeah, we get we get yeah. a really thin layer on on the vehicles in the morning, and and some of the metal parts that the the, the kids' uh, schools play structures and stuff. Right. I, I remember taking an old uh, sort of plastic card, not a credit card, but a similar size, and just using it to scrape off that stuff off the windshield and whatnot. Right. So we, that's a that's a California frost. <laughs> but you don't you don't usually get cold enough to freeze, do you? Uh, like uh, where we have to where we have to be concerned about hoses and and spigots getting yeah. like, I think you know it it depends on it depends on you know sometimes you get really freak cold sometimes you get really freak weather, um, but there had been times where. I mean, you'll see some of these properties in these townhomes where they've got all of the piping on the exterior, you know, with a, with all of that padding and foam and whatever they need to make sure that it doesn't freeze. So it, it, it it's an occasion. I mean, it's a it's a concern, but not heavily like you know where you're at. 
Hey, Ruel, you need to vamp yeah. a second. I'm going to put you on mute because I'm going to okay. make a lot of racket. Okay. And this is where Ruel starts to vamp. So I don't know about you guys, but I had a really fun Halloween. It has nothing to do with the service, but it was where I had got the chance to uh, use my crafting skills to make my son's special costume. Uh <laughs> You know, it, it, it involves using foam board, and uh, I started using uh, some blue painter's tape to sort of create a, a layer of on the front of the foam board that I could sketch over and then take a stencil knife and uh, uh, and kind of carve out my design, but that didn't work out too well, so I resorted to just good old hand-drawn stuff, and I originally thought I'd use a spray paint to uh, color it all, but that was going to mean my son was going to be wearing a mask that smelled pretty toxic, so I ended up using a, a black Sharpie. And, uh, yeah, it turned out really well, and I, I wish you guys could see it. I might have to share it at some point somewhere. My son uh, hates it. Didn't you, didn't you post it <laughs> on your page? Yeah, you're right. On your Facebook page? I yeah. couldn't really tell what it was. Yeah, it's the uh, the character is Sammy Lawrence of uh, Bendy and the Ink Machines. I don't know what it is either. I think it's based on a video game. And uh, you think. yeah, yeah. We're... Yeah, look, listen to me. I'm working while. My smallest <laughs> scrubber I had on site is going up the ramp now into my box truck. Folks, it sounds like Lonnie is is stuffing a dead body that's wearing heavy boots, heavy work boots, into a metal box. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> and that's essentially yeah. what it is. I am wearing heavy work yeah. boots, and um, I am wearing heavy work boots. I'm putting metal something metal into uh, a box truck. No dead animals, though. I just have, like, like 10, 15 pigeons just all fly above me. <laughs> Ew, hope they don't, uh, do they leave you any presents? No, which is great. That's why don't feed the animals, folks. Everyone's so concerned about the innocent animals, but they're really not innocent. They're shitting everywhere. <laughs> Well, they got to do what they got to do. I can't help it. I was really guilty this morning because I had a oh I had a green smoothie last night, and uh, so this morning I was really guilty in the bathroom. Uh oh, oh. <laughs> Just doing wow. what I got to do. Mmm, lovely, nice visual. Ah. <sighs> Last heavy on? piece coming up. Oh, not much. I did look at going to New York, though. I was talking to Anna, and we, we were going to, my wife and I were trying to, well, we were going to go into New York to see her show and surprise everybody. And, um, but then I failed this test, so I had to work all this past weekend. Uh, so that, that kind of cool. A trip to New York, see Anna, see the show, yeah. meet other right. uh, other folks from the group. Right. So it looked like there was only five or six that showed up, though. My brother and Amber yeah, but- were, were two of them. <laughs> your, your brother, uh, he, uh, he commented on one of my social media posts and, uh, uh, I posted some uh, some images of uh, me digging into uh, yeah uh, uh, the uh, you know the the duck embryo yeah bit. yeah balloon <laughs> or something yeah exactly <laughs> uh, and he's like you know what I like you but that's just he's he's a, I like you but uh, that's just wrong what's wrong with you <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe you eat that. I, I don't. I mean, I guess if I watched you eat it, I, I guess I would try it. Guarantee you eat even... it. 
you you if you close your eyes and you pop it in your mouth, you would enjoy it just like any other hard boiled egg. Well, see, I'm not a real big hard boiled egg fan. Yeah, yeah. So so the question is then why why eat that? Why don't you just eat a hard boiled egg? Because right. Because it has that fear factor element. <laughs> Does it smell I, bad? No, no, it does not at all. It, it doesn't smell raw, I mean, rotten or anything like that. It smells of uh, egg, like a hard-boiled egg. The, that that wonderful fart smell of a hard-boiled egg. <laughs> yeah, I've got three more. I, I, had you, I, had you, I had you on mute for a second. Um, uh, yeah, you make that sound good. so appetizing, <laughs> a hard-boiled <laughs> egg fart. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I think part of it too is a, a test of of uh, my tolerance for its level of. That's gross. It really is. Like I, I took a fork to the thing and I and I, I separated it. I'm like, you can clearly see, right? It's a duck embryo. Like, oh, there's the there's the little critter. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, yeah, I better stop thinking about it and pop it in my mouth before I gross out. <laughs> And stuff like that, I always wonder what goes to what goes through my mind is I just sit there and wonder who's whoa, who's the first one that saw this to try it? I think that was going to be a a good idea. Yeah, you you know, with somebody who was like, okay, we got eggs, we got eggs, we're going to make a scrambled egg, or we're going to make some we're gonna some eggs for some potato salad or something, and then they're like, oh dang, these eggs are further along than we expected. But smells delicious. Let's just eat it anyways. And they figured it out. Yeah, must. Or the one that kind of trips me up sometimes is the, uh, uh, you know, the hallucinogenic mushrooms. I always heard yeah. that they're, they, they grow under cow pies. So I'm like, man, who's oh. the hungry guy that that, you know, was so hungry one day that he flipped over a cow turd? And thought, ooh, there's a mushroom. Let's try it. I mean, you got to be really hungry. Oh, <laughs> uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't know how true that is, but that's what I've always heard that it's that it's uh yeah that's where they that's where they're found. Who knows? Ah, now this curtain's coming down. Yeah, I don't normally get to take Ruel to work with me on these endeavors. I just had so much all in my lap at the last second today. I was telling you about the hotel, and then after that, I had to go look at a friend of mine. Well, she thought she thought sewer backed up into her carpeted area. I said, "Well, shoot me your garage door code. I'll swing and take a look at it." Well, unfortunately, there was nothing there, so I just told her, "Like, yeah, you're good." She's heard me talk stories over the years, and uh, she was worried to death that it was going to be on her carpet. Wow! So, so, but so does everybody? Uh, is everybody? Sorry. No, you're you're good. So does everybody have a garage door code where you're at? Uh, for the most part, you know, which makes it really nice as a service guy. Whatever you're into, you know, you can let yourself in and out now some people do want to be there you know but if they do then fine I, i'll give them a hard time but i'll be there at whatever time and and be there but by and large people are like yeah you must be trustworthy or you wouldn't be in business for as long as you are so they, they give me their garage door codes or garage door openers if it's going to be an ongoing long-term job then I'll get garage door openers or just berries. But I like my own access. That way I can get there at 9 or 10 or noon or whatever. As long as I can get in and out, that's all I need. Yeah, ask because I've been, I've, been, I've been looking at getting one for the home. We don't have one. And, yeah, like you said, it's nice to have that access. 
Yeah, you give it to the pest control guy that comes by whenever, and I don't want that to be there. You know, just let yourself in and do your job and leave me the bill, and I'll pay you. Pay you later. Yeah, we had a we had some friend we had some friends one day watching uh, watching the kids watching the kids and uh, somehow they managed to lock themselves out of the house. <laughs> so for for a few hours they were just hanging out in our backyard and, and they were they were going through their phones looking on YouTube. How do you <laughs> basically how do you pick a lock? <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's a great search history to have. And uh, they couldn't figure it out, so they ended up just uh, contacting a locksmith who uh, who uh, tried to try to pick the lock the, uh, on the side door for the garage, and uh, didn't have any luck. So ended up just boring a hole through the thing and replacing the whole uh, lock. So that had to be one of those had to be one of those code devices to open up the garage that way. Then we wouldn't have had to go on through, go through that. Yeah, yeah, I, I love them. I got one on my house. It's, if I trust you enough, you know, it's like I tell them where the guns are at, so yeah, so don't go there. Yeah, yeah the uh, you know, at some point, you know, we're gonna have our, our oldest will be at that age where he's able to just be at home by himself without any anybody caring, you know. <laughs> Right, and uh, if he were to make his way home from school, and you know, bike his bike his way home, and he could just not have to worry about carrying a key or, or losing a key, and he would just get into the house that way. But that's yeah. well, down the road. What do you do? Don't make it. Don't make it your home address, or leave it at the factory. Of the hero. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or one, two, three, four. That I mean, those are the. Those are the three most common. And everybody's like, don't tell you, buddy, but it's my address. It's like, okay, no crook would have tried that. <laughs> it, is, it is amazing to me, though, how many people, though, will have just the factory setting of zero, 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 or one, two, three, four as their, as their garage door code. Yeah. I'm going to take you to work. I'm going to hand the key back to a, a lady. Are you good on time? How are you doing on time? I'm good. I'm good. Right. Ten more minutes. Then you got to go back to work. Yeah. And uh, maybe find something to, to, to snack on. Um, since I'm near, near uh, I'm by a place that has some good food. Right. I might. Hold on one second. Mm-hmm. Guess what? I'm done. Do I give you the key? Do I sign out? You'll sign me out? All right. And it is locked. Lights are off. Even this door down here is locked. So now you get to listen to construction noise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See you, ladies. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. This is take Ruel to work day. No, it's, it's not just take Ruel. Let's, let's take the listeners to, to Lonnie's work day. Yeah, yeah, it's a career day. <laughs> <laughs> what does your dad do? He gets dead animals out of houses. <laughs> uh, would have loved to be at, Would have loved to have been to work with you on that day. You picked up that really smelly thing at the bottom of the floor that one day. Yeah, yeah. That the <laughs> last one. The last ones I did was the nastiest ever. It was disgusting, even by my standards. Ah, so now let's drive back to the warehouse, my new warehouse space. I hope I hope all this comes out okay. It doesn't sound cheesy, but it's three no, o'clock no. my time or five till or whatever and it'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. <laughs> I've been driving or in that bank basement since we've been on the horn. Ah. Well, I'm 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 glad that uh, I'm glad that you're at, you're at a uh, 
you know, you're, you're in a, this, this current state where as if you were to think back, what was it? I don't know. A year. I mean, I don't know, several months back, you know, with all the mama drama. Right. Yeah. Right. And kids, oh. and, and kids going to detention and, <laughs> and having to move your, your stuff. You had a lot going on. So, yeah. Yeah. There was a time since ago that I was like, I'll get mama through the, cancer stuff and then I'll go get a job with somebody and then all of a sudden since since June I've I've made a year's salary since June so and I got more going awesome it's awesome yeah <clears throat> so lots to be thankful for I guess oh yeah yeah there's been a lot of blessings next week I'm starting a uh, a mold job all I gotta do is that containment and I'm on the right and then and on the uh, clean their dirt can collect a check. I don't even my building I'm not doing nothing but providing providing containment and running equipment. And that's it. Look for dollars, you know, not a big gross gross number, but zero still so that's always better. I had, a, I had a design you a t-shirt that says something along the lines of like, not got mold, because I'm sure got mold's been used. Maybe something like, thanks, mold. <laughs> yeah, mold is gold. Yeah, mold, mold is gold. That's a good one. Uh, that's, that's what we say. That's what we say in the industry. Mold is gold. Yeah. But, but no one like has rights to it. You could really use it, right? I assume so. We all say it. Yeah. Cool. I, mean, I don't. I don't. I don't know if it's trademark. <laughs> mold is gold. Yeah, I found out yesterday. I was talking to my mold tester guy, and uh, my my biggest competition, Surf Pro, and they thought they that they were going to get this bank job, and uh, yeah, and they were upset that they didn't get it. And mold guys like, no. Nope. These people ask for Lonnie explicitly. Sweet. They want Lonnie. Yeah, I didn't even have any competition to bid against or nothing. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Well, they is, must listen to they must listen to the podcast. They must. <laughs> and the old guy, he sends me he, and Sir Pro referrals. And um, but he because he knows we're gonna take care of him. So next time, yeah, was Lonnie Beecham wanting to tell you to get your life back to normal? That's a wrap. Go get your life back to normal, Lonnie with story, story, restore it, restoration. I'm the first participant to meeting with Zoom. Might be a little windy. I'm in my box truck right now as we speak. Just running out to pick up the mare scrubbers and mold equipment. Hey, hey. Sounds like Ruel's getting on. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm excellent today. Excellent's good. Excellent's excellent. Yeah, what are you doing there, people? I'm driving my box truck out to pick up uh, air scrubbers from a mold job. How's that coming along? How's the mold job? Well, this one, uh, I failed it last week and passed it today, so. Was this the one that uh, you shared a video? <clears throat> sort of. Yeah. In, uh, yeah. 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 That's my uh, biggest baby right now. Nice. The business is booming. Yes, it is. Let me double check to make sure that we're recording. <laughs> okay. I th- I'm pretty sure we are. I have confidence in technology. It never goes wrong. <laughs> well, I didn't say anything about it being recorded. Hmm. Okay. So maybe it... What if I hit start? Okay. Yeah. Or do you want to make something happen and you can call me just directly and report nope, it that we're way? Good. We're recording. I see, uh, <clears throat> I see the server recording, and I see both your number and my number on the thing.
So we're good. Okay. All right. Whatever all that means. <laughs> How you been, man? Um, man, I've been swamped, doing good, doing real good. Yeah, it's been a while, so I figured. I just believe that we were, we both have just been really busy and productive, and and uh, that's why we haven't been able to record for the past few weeks. Yeah, you want to kick this off? Sure. Ready? Yep. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production.